how we started uh, around 16 years ago I was I was a volunteer for Red Cross and one night they called me and said Sonny come to help to choose some food okay so I went to that place and they give me some din uh, bread and butter so we spread the butter on the bread and then we walk to the area um, I want you to think a little bit deeper when you distribute the dinner boxes or whatever um, do not judge them for what, why they are there uh, because everyone has a different history so I know a lot of different street slippers during the time. So sometimes they would tell me, hey, Sunny, there's street slippers in that place because uh, they move around a lot. Is There's many reasons for that. Well, sometimes they don't get along with the other. Sometimes they want to be isolated. Someone, they, they look for a new place to go. Sometimes because the government also raised the whole place. However, because there are a certain number of street slippers in Hong Kong, I think the government is sort of like half eyes open and half eyes closed. It's not a hundred percent rigid. Sometimes they allow them to stay for a while. But when certain situations turn a bit too noisy or annoying, they would come and raise the play from time to time. Okay, on Friday evening, I bring students mostly, like big group of students, and we go to the biggest uh, area that have more homeless people. I've seen many, many different history and background. I have seen a couple of old ladies who lived there for many years. Um, they're always together and one time I asked them, did the government offer you a place to go, like a, a room or something? And they said yes, but the government offered us separately. Like, if we go, then I will go to a different state and she will go to another state. And they refuse. They prefer to stay together. They are not blood related. They are just stay both as a street slippers. <laughs> and, and this is one of the really interesting histories that, you know, the reason why they, they prefer like this friendship together. A lot of them are drug addicted. So when you uh, have a lot of drug abuse, uh, you damage a lot of your brain cells. Not only drug abuse, but sometimes because of things that happen in their life. Like I, I met people who fail in their businesses and lost everything. Uh, a lot of them have this kind of problem. I'm going to be honest with you. For me, what they need is a new opportunity. Many of them feel hopeless because obviously for their own physical health condition on this age is extremely rare that anyone could offer them a second chance. So physical, uh, physically capable, I would prefer they could do some simple work or something to give them some confidence about life, you know, going back to the normal track. But the problem is um, as I said, I bring a lot of companies and corporate people and always there are HR people present. But when I ask them, can we do something for them or hire them to move things or cleaning or anything, um, the answer is always dead air. It's like nobody could answer me that we could do something about it. Doing charity has never been an easy thing. A lot of people think that it's easy. It takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of hard work. Sometimes you feel exhausted, sometimes you feel like you're not doing what makes you happy. And sometimes it can cause you even depression when you see really bad cases and sad cases and you couldn't do anything about it. So the year before I set up Sun Charge, I went with a female volunteer. It's a very tiny, tiny town called Nong Pua Long Pu, near Yudon Thani, uh, taking care of HIV and AIDS orphans. They are staying there for one month, taking care of the HIV orphans. So they, they don't have parents anymore. When I take him, he always feel like he rejected me. And I didn't know why, because I thought that he was really sick, he was just brought back from the hospital. He was really sick and um, cannot move for a week, and he was like eight or nine years old. 
And then uh, one day I asked the sister, what happened to him? He said he got infected because he was abused by a family member. The sister wrote to me later on and told me that the boy actually passed away a month after I left. And that was 15 years ago. I'm not saying that I'm always happy. It's stupid to tell you that I, I'm always happy. It's, it's ridiculous. Sometimes I feel depressed. Uh, strongly depressed, it's, uh, frustrated because of many, many reasons, especially when, you know, I'm one man band in one organization. It's, it's a lot of stress that I cannot tell anyone. Fourteen years ago when we set up Sunshine Actions, um, both my former good friends, we are both not social workers, we never have any experience in social science. We are both in the business field, we are business people. Um, but because we have uh, volunteer for all the organizations, we decided to do our own thing because you know we, the experience we have um, but because we don't have time to deal with individual cases as social worker in Hong Kong need to deal with 30 to 40 individual cases on consistent basis okay um, and we are we both have our own full-time jobs and we don't have this kind of uh, time to receive a phone call for a case and spend half hour with them so we decided to do the best from our size because we are business-related people. So I, I told my friend, hey, let's do food. Let's do material thing. We find resources, we distribute food, we distribute things. Because for us, we are only two person at that time. And we don't have staff, we don't have social workers, we don't have anything. But instead of, but because we are business-minded people, so we want to use the minimum cost to hit the maximum beneficiaries. The history of the fortune bags. We actually don't park in the office before, and we used to park in the schools. I work with many international schools. We normally, before the pandemic time, I park in one single morning, a few thousand bags. Here, uh, the first three months of 2022, we actually compressed the whole workload of 2019 because Hong Kong having 8,000 deaths now. Demand is going up a lot, but the people handling the demand is a lot less. I'm going to bring you to the biggest concentration of homeless people in Hong Kong. It should be 60 to 80 people there, so it's a lot larger. I used to do this 15 years ago, so I want to do it. Take a look. It's very different than the one you saw in Cosway Bay in Hong Kong side. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday morning, I'm going to do a distribution of this in one of the housing states, in Lai Gang Station. So you will go to distribute the bags to the home of the elderly. And visit them. I have been doing this for many years. This group that really need help in Hong Kong are elderly, poor elderly, because around uh, uh, around seventy percent of people applying for the social welfare in Hong Kong are actually elderly. Okay, so those are they somehow don't have any support from their own family, and uh, maybe they don't even have a family. <laughs> <笑>我們要去申請一下幾年<笑> 坐在床口就寫字 work with many many partner organizations It's very hard for us to go one by one So what we do is rely on the social workers or the person in charge of the partner organization to identify the cases who are in need. So the, the social worker or the person in charge of the organization have to go to visit them and have a list of names and know who is who. 
Uh, and then we would send us to us when and um, how many bags they need, so we decide how many we're going to donate. Even for 100 cases, is is not that easy to just distribute because to distribute one fortune bag, you need to call four times to remind the elderly because elderly don't remember well, and sometimes you don't get them, <laughs> so they have to call. You know, is is a lot of pre work that the foster workers or the person in China have to do for 100 bags. The social workers in Hong Kong are paid by the government as social workers department. So in theory, they have things set two years ago. The program for this year is all set. I have to do this part of the job. But when some action come in, and I say, I want to do you so I want to do it's extra workload for them. It's not included in the normal workload. I didn't understand that at the beginning years. And then I realized, why they hate me so much? <laughs> I come to donate something, right? I, I give you a big, uh, and they, they act like I don't want to see you. <laughs> but we help in the last three months. Um, 137 organizations in Hong Kong. It's, it's over 13,000 people or families. I feel like I don't have much regret of my life because um, I think I have done a lot of things that make me feel my life is worthy. Uh, I have seen a lot of elderly that, that when we talk uh, at that age, they feel like I sometimes regret about life because uh, they feel like they haven't accomplished much in their own life. A lot of people, especially old people, um, they face a lot of loneliness. You know when you're old, a lot of people don't want to talk to you, especially young people, right? So. Um, I, I remember the elderly saying that my son are not visiting me anymore because, well, the COVID is it's not only because it's dangerous for elderly, but it's also dangerous for the, the, the grandchildren. For those that, when you walk into a room and don't see any pictures of families or something, I always tell the students, hey, be careful, be sensitive. Maybe they never have family. I feel like even when you have a huge family, sometimes doesn't mean they're good to you. Or oh, doesn't mean they always come to visit you. It's like, but the worst thing is you have to worry about them. I, I totally understand that feeling because I worry about my godson and my goddaughter so much and they don't care about me. They only care about their girlfriend and boyfriends. <laughs> there's a lot of students coming or, or volunteers coming to some Joshua parking, but I want them to see the entire process. You don't just come to park. Okay, I want you to see who are you giving to, but talk to them. Feel them. It's, it's real people, right? You, you need to learn some experience from these people. And I think at the beginning, the very strong feeling that I always have is whenever I look at them, is like I remind myself that I'm actually looking at the mural. It's like, this is how you're going to look like 50 years or 60 years later. You are actually watching yourself in there. And then, then you have to think about how do you think you would like to be treated by then? And this is the way you should be treating him now.